I would like to share with you some ancient knowledge regarding the builders of the pyramids. Now the ancient pyramid is the only known structure in the world that we know of that contains the phi and the pi. So I'm going to show you how this um, four-sided pyramid with a square base encoded and encapsulated all the ancient harmonics that the masters of the universe knew about. So um, here we have a picture of most people are familiar with ancient Egyptology. This is Thoth in the ancient Greek. Whoever wins the war, the Greeks won the war, they changed the name from Thoth to Hermes. But we know that according to ancient Egyptian legends, Thoth was the builder of the pyramids. Some people say it was 11,000 years ago, some people say it was um, 60,000 years ago, but so Thoth had all the knowledge, he introduced writing, architecture, he was the builder. And I'm going to show you that this pyramid contains all the knowledge of pi and phi, so look, we're going to define that in a second. Um, what I'm leading up to is that when we talk about pi, I'm going to show you how the true value of pi um, equals 3.14460 because we understood the true harmonics of this pyramid. We're going to see that inside the heart of the pyramid is a very unique triangle. So this is, a, is, this is like a 3-4-5 triangle but it's based on the harmonics of the golden ratio and once we establish that this is based on 1.618, the golden mean, then we can establish the true value of pi. So that's why we have um, um, masters like Jesus, Sananda, um, holding this geometry on their heart because this, this was known as the most beautiful triangle in the universe and it's the heart of the pyramid. So let's, let's draw it. Um, so a, a bit of history was that the, um, Herodotus was from a place near Turkey in ancient Persia. So we're going back around the time of P Pythagoras which was 500 BC at 450 BC, this, um, this character called Herodotus was known as the first historian of the world. He kept all the records and he travelled actually to the Egyptian pyramids and he met the pharaohs and he learnt a fact. He learnt, the fact that he learnt was that they told him that the pyramids of Egypt had a certain uh, ratio of the, the height to the faces. So if we took the square of the height of the pyramid, it's like a square, it's equal to each of the four faces of the pyramid. So that's the same thing over here. So we've got that diagram here and this is all because there's a unique triangle. In today's term that right angle triangle is also called Kepler's triangle and it's based on the golden ratio which I'm going to explain in a minute. But to get the um, harmonics correct, we're going to, we're going to start off with um, a square base. And normally in, in sacred geometry we always like to say that's one and that's one, but what we're going to do here is we're going to take half the, the base, we'll call that one. Actually I'll do this in red. I want you to appreciate this triangle. So if we call this distance one from the centre of the pyramid, so here we have the pyramid, so what we're doing is we're going to the centre of the pyramid there to the edge. So that half the base, we, they give it a name, it's called the apothem. If that, so that distance is one. We know, we know, Herodotus was explained, it was explained to him that the slope height, not the edge height, so when I say the slope height I mean this this slope going down the midpoint, not the edge height, they're a slightly different ratio. So the slope height was 1.618, but instead of writing, here it is, phi equals 1.618, but the symbol for phi was a circle with a line. That's like the Greek letter um, for, for F, phi, whereas pi is the P sound. So P is for, in Greek was pi, but we're talking about like the F sound in the ancient Greek was phi. Some, some people pronounce it phi. So this was the key that the ratio of this triangle in the centre of the pyramid was 1 is to 1.618, but we want to know what the height is. So this was the critical factor because to get the true value of pi, we need to know exactly what the height of the pyramid is. So because, and Herodotus observed that the, the height squared was equal to the area of 
the triangles of the, the face of the pyramid. So, so by knowing the altitude of a face, which is, I've drawn it over here, so, so this is the triangle of one of the four sides of the pyramid. So just a little bit of algebra, I won't go deep into it, I just want you to explain that by knowing algebra, where we have x is the unknown, Herodotus was able to calculate that the height squared equals x squared minus 1. And that's because we know Pythagoras' theorem. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So you do a little bit more work and you say h, the height, this, this height from a to o is called the square root of x squared minus 1, but this equals the area of a triangle. So now we have a formula called x squared minus x minus 1 equals zeros. And when we find the roots of this quadratic, it's exactly 1.618. So when we talk about the golden ratio, we're, we're, we're basically saying that the, 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 they hid this knowledge in the guts or the heart of the pyramid inside the um, Kepler triangle. So this bit that I've shaded here, you could say is, is one of the keys to the universe. Because this is what's going to lead, lead up to the true value of pi. And you also know at school, if you wanted to calculate the area of that triangle there, you know we can calculate it because we, we know that the area for a triangle is, is the base times the height divided by 2, or half the base times the height. So that's why we appreciate all these formulas, because they're teaching us how to extract the true value of pi and phi. So I'm calling this topic phi pi. In a way, this is advanced mathematics, but it's based on what we call pure principles. It's very simple knowledge. So when you see the symbol for phi multiplied by pi, that is spoken or expressed as phi pi. So I've spent the last 35 years of my life exploring the mystery of phi pi. It actually means phi times pi. So if you multiplied phi, 1.618 times pi, 3.14, you get approximately something like 5.088. It goes on. But at which pi are we using? Are we using traditional artificial pi or are we using the true value of pi? So let's, talking about pi, I said to you at the introduction that we can extract pi from the pyramid. So we know we've just found the golden ratio in the pyramid, but where is pi in this construct? So pi would be, if we, so we know that if this is 1, we know that this distance here is 2, and that distance here is also 2. So if we take twice the edge length, so 2 plus 2 is 4, we're going to divide double the base, that's going to give 4. So pi is twice the base, so we're taking this plus that is 4, and we're going to divide it by the height. So we know that the height, the height of the pyramid, which I actually didn't tell you before, it's called the square root of phi. The square root of phi is 1.272. So the square root, that what that means is that 1.272 times 1.272 gives us 1.618. So, um, so that's called the square root of phi. So the square root of phi, that's the symbol for it. So 1.272 divided into 4 gives us 3.144. It goes 6055110269. And it keeps going to 3144. Did you notice how these four digits here, 3144, repeat the original first four digits of 3.144. So this, this goes to infinity, and that, that means there's no um, recursion, there's no obvious um, part of the sequence that keeps repeating, um, which is called, um, we call it like decimal circularization or periodicity. So I just wanted to show you that we're looking at this structure of the ancient Egyptian pyramid, and it contains phi, and pi, and like I said before, there's no other structure in the universe that can do that. Um, yes, and, and just to conclude, the reason why I'm showing you this value of the true value of pi is that there's a lot of people now, I've spent 
the last 30, 20 years just releasing this code. There's a lot of authors at the moment all claiming that they've discovered it and all, all they've done is basically looked at my work and sort of changed a few equations. So, but there was, there's been a Greek professor called Professor Stephanides and from Greece who did the first fourth dimensional algebra on it. But this book here is the first mentioning of 3.144. It's called The Magic Numbers of Dr. Matrix by one of my favorite philosophers and mathematicians, Martin Gardner. Now this was done, this book was published in 1985, but it was actually um, a reprint. So it was actually done in the 1960s. So I'm gonna open up to this page here. I'm gonna open up to this page here where there's the diagram of the pyramids that I've just drawn. And if you look closely here, it's saying that if you divide, um, um, there's a the, if you divide four, which is twice the base, by the square root of five, which is the height, you get three point one four four six. So this is the first time that we see in print the true value of pi three point one four four six, um, because normally pi is three point one four one, which I believe is a disharmonic frequency, and that the world now is shifting towards a much more um, unified field of consciousness where people learn to speak the truth.